great Scott, I look like Edna Mode. My god, you've gotten fat. <laughs> Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video. I am so excited for today's video because it is in collaboration with Nani here on YouTube. If you don't know, Nani is a screenwriter filmmaker here on YouTube and we have recently become mutual and decided to do a little collaboration for you guys because we thought it would be fun. Basically, I'm going to be answering five to seven questions today that Nani has for me about screenwriting and filmmaking. And I also asked her five to seven questions as well. So she's going to be answering them over on her channel. So after you watch this video make sure you check out her video which will be linked in the description box below give her a lot of love and subscribe to her she also wanted to say hi to you guys as well so let's take a look at what nani has to say hi sabrina thank you so much for doing this collaboration with me this is going to be exciting i've been also watching your content for a while now and then seeing you keep learning writing producing and then putting out more short films you inspired me to create even more and staying creative so I'm so glad we're doing this today. And a hi to everybody on Sabrina's channel. My name is Nani. I'm a writer, director, producer based in Los Angeles. In my channel, I mainly talk about creativity and every aspect of being a filmmaker, writer, director, as well as sharing my journey, learning, experience of making my own film. And so yeah, if you finish watch this video, don't forget to subscribe Sabrina's channel and then head over to my channel. I'll be answering some of Sabrina's questions as well. Thank you so much, Nani. I'm so excited that we get to collaborate. And without further ado, let's get into the questions. And first question, when was your first time realizing that you want to be a filmmaker? And then what inspired that thought? Okay, I am so excited for this question. I love when this question gets asked because it's literally just so inspiring and so interesting to me what other people have to say. Um, would ask this question, but I'm glad you asked this question. Um, how many times I'm gonna say question? I don't know. The first time that I realized that I wanted to be a filmmaker, screenwriter, director, and I've mentioned this before on my channel, it is when I sat down and watched the entirety of Gilmore Girls for the first time. Um, I was about 18 years old when I first watched it, and I I didn't really know that you could work in film like i thought movies were made by the government and just like given out to people i know greta gerwig also has this quote where she's like i thought movies were handed down by the gods and i really relate to that i didn't really think about the fact that movies were made by people and i have always been a fan of movies they have been so important in my life and so when i watched gilmore girls for the first time gilmore girls has a very unique style the way that they speak it's very fast it's very back and forth and i fell in love with that because ever since i was in middle school i had been a huge fan of old, old hollywood films like singing in the rain and easter parade summer stock funny girl, all of them. And so when I watched the show, it really spoke to me in that way because you know, all those movies are referenced and the way they speak and the way that Amy Sherman Palladino directs and writes, it is very old Hollywood. And it's just very theatrical and I love that. So yeah, I sat down and I watched it, fell in love with it. And it was the first time that I really asked myself, wait, like somebody actually wrote this. Like who wrote this? How did they write this? Um, and then I came to find out what screenwriting was. I came to find out what directing was and just, you know, went down a rabbit hole when it came to researching and I was hooked from then on. Uh, I'm pretty much obsessed now. That was definitely when I knew that I wanted to be a screenwriter director. And then I just started watching a bunch of movies, um, obviously fell in love with so many different styles and so many different directors and writers, including Greta Gerwig, who was very similar in her writing um, when it came to dialogue. So I, the first movie I watched of hers, of her, that she wrote it and that she was in was Frances Ha, automatically fell in love with it and knew that I wanted to make movies. And I realized they could be still be simple and not have to be these huge blockbusters. And since then I've been so interested in films like that and in indie films that don't take so much. And it, there's not usually like things being blown up in the background or like a lot of noise, but they're some of the most impactful movies. And I know I'm rambling, but I just love it so much. And yeah, that was definitely when I found out I wanted to be a filmmaker, screenwriter, director. Amy Sherman Palladino and Greta Gerwig have a lot to do with it. It's all your guys' fault. So thank you. And the second question, what was your biggest challenge so far on your filmmaking journey? Mm, I love this question as well. I think my biggest challenge 
would probably be the fact that sometimes I feel like in order to really be successful in this industry, you have to live in Los Angeles and you have to, you know, be working in a production studio. And for the majority of indie filmmakers or independent artists, that's just not the case. And so I was constantly thinking like, oh, well, I, I don't have the right connections and, and I don't know, you know, where to start. I guess that was the biggest challenge for me was trying to find connections and trying to network so that I would be able to make films. I feel like I'm slowly but surely conquering that though. Um, as I learn more, I think my advice for somebody who is facing this kind of struggle is to just do what you can with the materials that you have. And you know, the internet is such a huge tool and I've been using that as well to kind of conquer that fear of networking and connecting and realizing that it's not so scary when you do put yourself out there. Um, so yeah, I guess that's the biggest challenge so far that I faced when it comes to filmmaking but it's definitely going in the right direction, so very happy about that. And the third question, do you have a favorite position amongst writing, directing, producing, filming, and acting, and why? Oh my gosh, all your questions are so good. I love this question. It's so hard because I love all of them so much. Um, I, I guess I would say that I really, really love screenwriting just because of the process of it. Um, just getting to come up with an idea and come up with a story and really just write that down and see it come to life on paper. Um, I also really love directing and I think recently I've become, I've fallen more in love even with acting. It's not something that I've practiced my whole entire life, but it is something that I'm becoming more passionate about and I'm really excited about that. So I think between screenwriting and acting, I think I would have to choose screenwriting, but um, acting is really close to that as well. <laughs> Number four, what was your biggest lesson so far as a filmmaker? I think my biggest lesson that I've learned so far as a filmmaker is the act and the art of just doing. Um, I think a lot of the time, a lot of us can get in our heads about pretty much anything and we can become fearful that we won't be successful in a certain industry or in a certain passion. And uh, I think obviously that has to do a lot with imposter syndrome and just feeling like you're not the person or you don't belong in a certain industry. But I've come to realize it's not that you become a specific person and then you can, you know, start doing the things that you love. It's really like you become the kind of person that you need to be along the way and along the process of creating what you want to do. And I think my biggest lesson has really been that is to just do it with the materials that you have as I, as I have explained before, because you know, we're all, we all have different experiences, we all have different realities, and one person's, person's way of doing something is not necessarily the way that you're gonna do it, and that's completely fine. You, a lot of the times, reach the same destination anyways. That's my biggest take from filmmaking and life, is to just jump in and do something, and if your approach to doing that thing is just to learn it, you're never really gonna fail. There's no such thing as failure when you're just trying to learn something. And in that learning process, you become a genius at it and you become so good at that thing. And that's how people, you know, become confident in their industry or passion. And that's something that I guess I've taken away from that. And I know I'm literally going into being a philosophical Aristotle person right now, but that's what I've taken away. And then number five, what advice would you give to the younger you? I love this question too. Um, I am such an advocate for being in tune with your inner self or your inner child. Um, I think losing your inner child is so detrimental to your development as a human being and growing up as a person. I think the advice that I would give to my younger self is to just continue to be yourself, continue to love what you love and do what you do. And I think I would tell my younger self to not stress so much about being the perfect person or doing the perfect thing and to just continue to be yourself because I know in my life I really went through a phase I mean not to be like all therapist on you guys but like I know I for a chunk of my life I kind of suppressed the things that I was and it kind of made me really sad and anxious and it's not something that I would recommend to anybody um, I think that you should just be a hundred percent yourself no matter what and um, recently I have really connected with my inner child and my inner child has always loved storytelling, has always loved movies and has always loved to perform. And that has made me the happiest when I'm doing the things that I know that my inner child has always wanted to do. So yeah, 
Thanks for coming to my therapy session. And number six, who is your favorite screenwriter and filmmaker? I know you guys know this because I'm absolutely in love with her. I just would love to sit down to, and speak with her over dinner and also be her best friend. And like, I, it's Greta Gerwig. It's Greta Gerwig, okay? I, like I explained before, she's the one who really got me into want, wanting to write movies. When I first watched Gilmore Girls, I thought it was that I wanted to be a television writer, which I'm not opposed to at all. Like, I would love to be a television writer. But when I saw that when you, you can incorporate such creativity into such a simplistic form, like she did with, you know, Frances Ha and even Lady Bird and Little Women, these are... Lady Bird and Little Women are definitely bigger blockbusters, but there's just something so simple about it and there's something so lovely about it. Um, I think a lot of the times, and especially now with production studios, they're always looking for some way to make more money with their movies. And I think Greta Gerwig is just because she's coming from an indie standpoint, she really understands what it is to make movies. It's not just, you know, intellectual property. You're trying to make a movie just for the money, which I'm sure she, you know, thinks of because money's important and who else wouldn't want to get paid to do what they love. But like, it, to me, I just feel like she understands life and she really looks at life through her reality and through her experience and doesn't filter that in her writing and directing style. I also really, really love her dialogue, the way that she writes dialogue. Um, like in Little Women, for instance, when everybody's like speaking over each other and how she incorporated that into the script with um, the slash um, to indicate when another character is supposed to speak over the other character. I think that is so incredibly insane and crazy, but it works so well. And I just really, really admire her. Um, and she's definitely my favorite director, screenwriter, filmmaker. Love you, Greta. Can't wait for Barbie. Like, I literally cannot wait. Like, you don't even know. Like, I'm going crazy. And then the final question, who is your dream actor to work with? Okay, the final question is actually the hardest question out of all of these because if you don't know me, then you don't know that I am basically just a fangirl. Um, if it wasn't, if I just, if I wasn't a screenwriter, director, filmmaker, actress, whatever title, I would just be fangirl, period. Like, I, I get so obsessed with things, especially actresses, I have a deep love for them. And I don't know because I love so many, um, especially like Sarah Paulson and uh, Sandra Bullock, Jessica Chastain and Vera Farmiga. But I think the one that tops it all is, drumroll please, Miss Kate Blanchett, okay? I'm literally in love with this woman. I don't understand how someone can be so gorgeous, so talented, so tall, and just like amazing all around. Like I definitely would love, love to work with her one day. I would, pr I will probably pass out the first minute that I get to meet her. But then, you know, after like I get some apple juice and sugar and me and, and kind of calm down, I think it would be great to work with her. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely a hardcore fan, hardcore fan girl of her. Um, and you would see that all over my Instagram because I just post pictures. It's pretty much just her and Taylor Swift and Gilmore Girls. That's all I post on my stories really. So that's that. That is it for the questions. Thank you so, so much, Nani, for collaborating with me and for all your wonderful questions. I literally enjoyed answering every single one of them and you are amazing. I admire you so much. Guys, definitely go over to Nani's channel and subscribe to her, give her some love and also watch her film that she recently just made. I will also link that in the description box as well. She's amazing and I just cannot believe that I even got to collaborate with her. So thank you again so much. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you did like it, make sure you give it a huge thumbs up so I know to make more additional content like this. Don't forget to click the subscription button down below and click the notification bell so that YouTube can notify you every time that I upload a video. Comment down below your answers to any of these questions or any other videos that you would like to see or just say hi because I would love to say hi to you. I don't know why I would like to say hi to you with a southern accent, but I would like to say hi to you nonetheless. I leave all of my social media links in the description box below so that we can catch up and become the best of friends. And I also leave my music channel in the description as well if you want to go, you know, sing some tunes with me, um, sing some show tunes with me. Anyways, thank you guys so much. I love you and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye!